Hello and welcome to this special interview on post-traumatic stress disorder in children, sponsored by the Anxiety Disorders Association of British Columbia. I'm Dr. Michael Catchpole and my guest is Dr. John Walker. Dr. Walker is a clinical psychologist and director of the Stress and Anxiety Program at St. Boniface Hospital. Dr. Walker, thanks so much for being here. Dr. Walker, can we talk a bit about precipitating events for post-traumatic stress disorder in children? I think a lot of people have heard about this resulting from war in adults and so on, and maybe for kids as well, but could you talk a bit about what kinds of things can trigger PTSD in children? Well, traumatic events are actually common over the years in everyone's life. So common events we see in children are being involved in a motor vehicle accident, having a death in the family like a parent, witnessing a, a bad car accident, and um, even unfortunate things like family violence, physical and sexual abuse. So there's a whole range of different situations that can trigger problems with PTSD. Now, any of those events might stimulate a, a stress reaction in a child which may or may not resolve. When, when does it become post-traumatic stress disorder? Well, uh, anyone is sort of upset after a stressful event, so that's a normal response. In most people, adults and children, the stress settles down over the days. In a smaller proportion of people, they continue to feel very upset afterwards, and often you see signs like sleep disturbance, distractibility, poor concentration, and someone having difficulty following their normal routine. And if that happens, that's the time it takes some extra attention for sure. What about nightmares, flashbacks, that kind of thing? Is that part of the pattern in children? Absolutely. Uh, upsetting dreams, nightmares, intrusive memories are very common in children. Okay. Now let's talk about some home management strategies. What sort of things can a parent or caregiver do to help a child who's been through this sort of thing? Um, I think the mo most basic uh, important approach is to be a really good listener, to be an active listener to your child. So to allow your child to talk about the events, how they feel about afterwards, and to really accept your child's feelings and not try to minimize them. That can probably be hard for the parents sometimes too though, to listen, right? Isn't that activating for the parent as well? Absolutely. So this is a challenge we all face, that the parent may have gone through the same trauma and allowing the child to talk about it may get them remembering about it. So it's, it's useful to do even though it's difficult. I think that's a key point. Even though it's difficult, it's the right thing to do. Can you talk a little more about other home management strategies? What else can the parent do to help a child? Well, a, a key thing actually is helping the child return to their normal activities after an upsetting event. So even after something as upsetting as the death of a parent, most children will return to school after a few days, and returning to school and normal activities is part of the recovery process, really helps people. Very interesting. Other home management approaches one could take to help a child? Um, really, we need to realize that when someone's gone through a traumatic event like this, uh, discussing it once isn't often enough. So allowing a child, as they're ready, chances to talk about it, listening to them when they want to talk about it, and really creating an open atmosphere that way really helps. And maybe even revisiting it at different developmental stages, yes? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, often it'll come up uh, now, it may come up again when there's another death in the family, so allowing a child to talk about it that way. Another thing I shouldn't forget is uh, avoidance. So for example, if a child's been in a motor vehicle accident, they may be very reluctant afterwards to go in a car or go on a car on a highway. And it's very important for us to encourage the child to get back to every normal activity, including driving in a car. So even though we might want to be protective, in fact, protective is really the opposite of what one's trying to do. One's trying to engage in exposure, really. Exactly. So taking that approach in a supportive way, in an understanding way, supporting your child to gradually resume their normal activities, encouraging them to face situations that are upsetting because of memories, and doing that on a step-by-step -step basis. And also for young children, maybe drawing. Little kids often express feelings via drawing. Would that be relevant? Any way of exploring it. So drawing is very, very helpful with children. It's drawing a story about what happened in the car accident or remembering and seeing pictures of a grandparent who's, who's died recently. Good tips. Dr. Walker, thank you so much. Uh, my guest has been Dr. John Walker, clinical psychologist from St. Boniface Hospital.